Good morning, Singapore. So my name is Paul Hudson, and this talk is called Man vs. Machine, Can Chat GPT Write Better Swift UI Code Than You? Now, a common scenario today is this. We say, I have a problem. And then we say, I know I can use AI to help me solve the problem. And what happens is now you have the same problem, but possibly also $50 million of VC funding. Hooray! <laughs> but that's despite some very serious known problems in the past with AI. IBM's Watson failed to diagnose, misdiagnose actual cancer patients. Amazon had to withdraw their hiring AI so they couldn't stop it discriminating against women. And Microsoft's chatbot Tay went full-on anti-Semitic Holocaust denial horror show. So we know AI has had problems. But apparently we can't resist the shiny. And then along comes OpenAI, funded by everyone's favorite space Karen. <laughs> and they did some remarkable things. Just last year, we saw DALI 2, where you can type free text and see the most remarkable things come out. Anything you like. And come on, we all put stupid things in there, didn't we? It's a curiosity, right? We, I said to it, hey, I want to see a painting of an angry raccoon on a pirate ship brandishing a banana for a sword. And honestly, it's not that bad. That's pretty good going, right? That's impressive stuff. And then, just last month, they announced ChatGPT, a chatbot. He remembers conversations you had, was asked previously, can build on those conversations, and learn from its mistakes. And it's very, very clever. Again, extraordinary stuff. You can ask this kind of thing. Give me a haiku about SwiftUI. And here we go. SwiftUI's code flows, elegant and simple to use, building apps with ease. It's about right, not exactly, exactly right, but close enough, right? Or, of course, you can ask it absurd things. Explain Swift to me in exactly three sentences using the word banana at least 10 times. It, it has a go. And I love the bit at the end where it says bananas are important for programming and should be eaten daily while coding. <laughs> well done. Although, if you're observant, only six bananas in there. B plus, not full on A, sorry. What happens is, ultimately, it's a chatbot. We're geeks. We're like, can I, can I be extra lazy here and make it write code for me? Ha ha ha! I could beat the system finally. And so I thought, well, possibly. Let's give it a try. Let's try it out. So I thought, what could we make it do? Here, this is my example. This is the iOS clock icon on your home screen right now, zoomed in real big. Can ChatGPT write me a clock like that? That's the challenge. And so I made a little Xcode project. This is the default app template in Xcode for iOS. Nothing in there special. And then I go over to ChatGPT. And I write in the simplest possible words, straight to the point, I want you to write me a working analog clock with Swift UI, making sure to take into account that I want to see the hands of hour, minute, and second. Really clear, simple language, go. And as soon as you press enter, it's thinking. Well, it's thinking what it's doing. So it's magic, and it just starts typing. And it's honestly quite remarkable. It makes a struck for the clock straight away, adds a current time state with private stuff, draws a text at the top here with a timer, a, a circle for the face in the Z stack with black stroke and so forth, then starts making paths, custom drawing paths for the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. It is quite remarkable. This is it working at its normal speed. Uh, and it's Amazing, you can see it's using uh, cosine and sine to get the x and y positions, using move to and add line to, stroking in the right color, the custom width. It's doing a lot, a lot, a lot of very clever work. And it repeats it for, this is the, the minute hand again, cosine and sine, path, da, da, da. It's extraordinary. 
and it works for a little while. It eventually gets a second hand, all being well soon. You can do it. I don't want to speed this bit up. This is actually working on the video, at least. And then another hand, so the second hand, like that. So it's making lots of code for us. Who owns the code? <laughs> but it's code. And eventually, yeah, move to and add line to. Boom, a second hand done. So that's all three hands done as requested. And then it goes ahead and says, when I appear, go ahead and start a timer. When the timer runs every second, update my little local state, and brilliantly add an extension on double to convert degrees to radians. <laughs> now, the best bit, it explains how the code works. Anyone can write code, but then explaining what it's doing, oh, that's super clever. Yeah. So it's explaining what it's doing and how it did it that way, and da da da, da. And there's even a button at the bottom saying regenerate response. You can make it do different answers. Give me a different code, different code, different code. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack my bags. I'm going to become like a, a photographer instead or whatever. Uh, this thing is going to eat my lunch. You ain't seen nothing yet. So it's written a whole bunch of code. How do we use that code? Well, it turns out we just scroll up, press this helpful button they put in there for us called copy code. It goes to my clipboard. I can go back to Xcode and just paste it on in. Straight into Xcode, as Swift UI code. Down here, I can say there's the default Xcode stuff. I just zap that whole VStack thing, put in its place, a call to the analog clock, and we're done. Now that, to me, seems pretty conclusive. Humans not looking so good at this point. Machines one, humans nil. Until you press Command B. <laughs> there are errors in my code. And you scroll up and have a look around, and yeah, there's errors. It's, it's kind of doing the whole, why can't I use ints and doubles interchangeably? Uh, and you can see there's a bunch of errors here. And I, I, I feel cheated, quite frankly, so I'm, I'm taking away that point. <laughs> no, <laughs> you've cheated. That's not, anyone can write bad code. I want to see code that actually compiles. Now, like I said to you, ChatGPT is clever because it remembers what you've asked it previously in the conversation. You can ask a follow-on question, and it will build on its previous answer. So I can literally, in Xcode, bring up the error message select their error message, copy that to my clipboard, and then tell that to ChatGPT. I can say, hey, your code, I'm sorry, that code does not compile. The error is this, and just hit paste. I'm telling it what went wrong, and it remembers its previous answer. As a result, it'll now say, whoops, sorry, there's a bug in the code, you're right. <laughs> I'll fix it for you. And I'll, sp I'll sped up a little bit now. That's the fix right there. It's doing a double typecast. So it avoids a whole double int mess. And then there's a whole bunch more. Again, sped up because it's synced otherwise, apart from those little fixes in place. But boom. This should compile and run correctly. Fantastic. OK. Scroll up. Copy the code. Back to Xcode again. And I'll, it's the same stuff. I'm going to select my previous thing, including the extension, and just press Command V over it, get the new version. And this time, as you can see, the build succeeds. So in six minutes, <laughs> we've gone from nothing to a fully working, fully compiling, fully operational analog clock with chat GPT, which is remarkable. And no matter what you think of the rest of this talk, be impressed by that alone. That is remarkable where we are today. This is a version one. Now, obviously, the next step is to go, yeah, humans, clearly, we're out. Forget it. AI wins. Ship it. <laughs> we're done. I'm going <clears> to <throat> just relax for a while. It can do my work for me. We're done. And of course, your boss says, you know, I. I'd love to see it running. What does it look like? You say, oh, it's fine. This is a fully working analog clock in Swift UI. I'll run the code back. <laughs> oh, man! I've got 
to get up again. <laughs> Don't ship it. Don't ship it. Stop, stop. <laughs> dirty, dirty, cheating AI. It's bad code. And like I said to you, you can ask the same question again and again and again. You can regenerate response again and again and again, getting different kinds of analog clocks. Here's one. <laughs> All numbers in the corner. Here's another one in the top with lines moving around it. Here's a third one. I don't know what's happening there. And a fourth one. <laughs> Very clever. But quite frankly, it is struggling. <laughs> The machines are not doing a good job here. And what we're seeing is, it knows all the words I'm using. It understands the words it's replying with, the Swift UI view, the modifiers, it knows what they are individually. But it struggles with the context. How do I put these things together effectively? And this is not new. This is in fact old. If you go back to Dali, I asked it this, I want a 3D rendering of a red cube on top of a blue cube. Should be simple compared to the raccoon banana example, and yet this is what it made for me. Red cube, blue cube. It's not on top of it. It gets the words, doesn't get the context. It struggles. Now, what we have so far is 48 lines of chat GPT code with middling results, if I'm being generous, right? If you showed someone who hadn't seen a clock before that, they'd go, well, that's very clever. We've seen clocks before, not good enough. What can humans do in comparison? Let's find out. And the rules of engagement are this. First up, I want to use relative sizes. You might have seen ChatGPT hard coding 300 or 150 da -da -da, all over the place. I want to make my thing scale nicely. Second, I want adaptive colors. It looks good in light mode and dark mode. And third, I'll take an incremental approach, step by step by step. And we'll start simple. A method here called get angles. Give me a date, I'll send you back the hour angle, the minute angle, and the second angle to draw the hands at various angles. And there's three steps here, as you can see. Step one, get a current hour, minute, second, and nanosecond. Step two, get angles from that. Step three, send them back. The first part's straightforward. It's just date components. Ask for the hour, minute, second, and nanos from the current date. Boom, get them back. Here, I apologize for terrible variable names. Screen space is limited. So H, M, S, and N are hours, minutes, seconds, and nanoseconds. I make them doubles, so easy to work with. And we use nil coalescing to zero, so we have default values. But how do we convert those to angles? Now you think about a clock. It looks like this, hours going round the way. What we want to do really is figure out how much we're moving an angle from straight up, say 12 o'clock, to one to the right, one o'clock. That's our angle movement around between each hour here. Now we know there are 360 degree circle, uh, degrees in a circle, and there are 12 hours. So each hour represents a 30 degree turn on our circle. As for minutes and seconds, well, there are 60 of those, and so they are six degrees in our circle. And so we can go ahead and say, well, if angle is hour times 30, brilliant. That means one o'clock is one times 30 is 30. Two o'clock, 60, three o'clock, 90, and so forth. Da -da -da. And when we hit 12 o'clock, it's fine. It'll loop around. 360. Bees come strep again. And we hit 13 o'clock, which of course is 24 hour clock. That's 1 o'clock in the PM. It'll loop around again to 390, and that's absolutely fine. So we can loop around for fine. But by itself, if we just said angle is hour times 30, what would happen is actually in Swift UI, that the angle will be pointing straight down. And we want 12 o'clock to be straight up. So what we'll do is say, do our angles hour times 30, but then simply add 180 to get zero being up the way. 12 is up, that's what we're saying. And so back in our code, we can write the first code here with that. Make degrees of 30 times the hour plus 180 or 60 times, six times a minute, da -da -da, like that. And finally, send it back. So now we get angles. Now it comes to drawing. Do we want sort of like stylish, skinny little hands, or kind of chunky hands like this. I don't actually care. I want relative size, so it looks good at every kind of size. And so I'm going to actually make all my dimensions relative to the radius of our drawing space. 
So I'll say, actually, my width is, or lines, radius divided by 30. Some number I've found ahead of time looks good at all different kinds of sizes. So it's relative size based on our radius. I think about drawing stuff in x, y grid. If I said draw a box at 0, 0, we'd get this. The top left corner of the box is actually, actually in the middle of the, the square, the grid. What we really want, really, is the whole box to be in the center of the grid, centered on that space, 0, 0. And we can do that by subtracting half the width and half the height, getting the box to move into the middle. So we can align things neatly. Those concepts we can put straight into code with this. Draw a hand in some kind of context with a length we decide here. There's our relative sizing. Get bigger or smaller, your width based on the radius of our variable space. And there's that half width thing happening to align it to the center of the area trying to draw it into. And that draws one hand of the clock. I'm using a primary color. I'll flip between black and white correctly so we have dark mode and light mode aware functionality. And now in our main Swift UI view body, we'll do a timeline view of the canvas with these steps inside. Step one, get the current hand angles. That's straightforward. We can just say get angles for the current date. Step two, get our drawing space. Well, that's how much space do we have, our total drawing rect, plus our radius. I've called it R for screen space limitations only. And then size constraints. How big should our things be on the screen? Again, all relative sizing. So the board is this, the hand, the hour length is that, the hand for the minute length is that, da da da. Again, terrible error name, sorry, space. All relative sizes. And in that more code to con come comment, that's the way we do the actual work of drawing our clock. This draws a circle, the border of our clock, and then we can say, move to the middle. Because by default, drawing happens from the top left corner of the canvas. We want to draw from the middle so our hands extend outwards from the center, not from the top left. And once that's done, we're going to say, draw hand. Draw the minute hand, draw the hour hand, boom. And we get that. Now, this, uh, we better chat GPT, which remember had 48 lines of code. Our human attempt is 34 lines of code and has what I consider a significant benefit of actually working. <laughs> and so, quite frankly, humans won, machines nil. <laughs> and with that, I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, don't be silly. You're way too easily pleased. <laughs> Come on. What? <laughs> That's rubbish. OK. <laughs> You're thinking, this is dull. This is boring. Anyone can write ugly clock code, obviously. Let's make it better, shall we? We can add this to our drawing code. Yeah, draw the little hand stalks coming out the way. But over, over that, I want you to draw a capsule. And this time, offset the capsule so it's slightly further away from the hands. Overlay the two together. And this produces this effect, just like Apple's clock. The stalk and the capsule coming out the way. Ooh, I'm just thinking, oh yeah, I might start stealing this code. OK. OK, getting better. <laughs> It's not a functionality improvement, but it looks nice. It got some ooze from the crowd, so I'm taking that as a half a point. OK? What else can we do? Well, let's draw a second hand. Again, some simple constants to get our sizing for second hand. And then make it a capsule and draw it onto the screen. Now, you'll notice the length of my second hand is 1.1 my radius. Now, from the middle, to the outside, this means it'll extend 10% beyond the perimeter of my circle, which sounds bad. But when I draw it, I offset it in the opposite direction. But Apple's design does. They, they go from beyond the center and then go right the way through. It looks much, much nicer, as you'll see. So now drawing a second hand after the call to draw hand in our code. And I'm making this orange. It looks good in light mode and dark mode. It matches the iOS color scheme. And now we get that. <laughs> Two, five to zero. <laughs> We're getting there slowly. That's nice, getting there. But this code could be better. It doesn't really work how clocks work. This is not what clocks actually do, right? Think about that we have time on a clock. We say it's 3 o'clock. The big hand, as I tell my small child, points to the 12, and the little hand points to the 3, and it means 3 o'clock. That makes sense. When it's half past three, well, the big hand now points to six for some random reason. Thanks, history. But 
that's not right. The hour hand does not, should not point to three anymore. The hour hand should really say, well, I'm actually halfway between three and four. I need to be part of the way along. And so our simple algorithm is hour da, 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 has to factor in part of the minute value. It's my hour number plus one sixtieth of the minute. So it moves around constantly. And then the minute angle is the same thing. It's minute plus one sixtieth of the second. The only complex one here is seconds. That has to use nanoseconds. Now, nanoseconds are a billionth of a second. And so our second value should be seconds plus one billionth of nanoseconds. And so we take our old code here for hours and simply bring in one sixtieth of minutes. Minutes, fine, bring in one sixtieth of seconds. And seconds, bring in one billionth of nanoseconds. That small change gets us this result. A constantly ticking second hand. It's called a sweeping second hand. Small change, but it's very nice. Definitely worth half a point. <laughs> I'm keeping track of all these points. OK, that's nice. So, so far, the record is we're on 40 lines of code. They're on 48. We've still got quite a bit of budget here before we hit their target. What else can we do? Well, let's make it look more like Apple's clock design. Because ours is not terrible now, but it could be better yet. In particular, we're going to draw an, a ring in the middle area, holding the sort of uh, skeuomorphic hands in place, as it were. So we're saying here, our inner ring, how big to make the ring, is one-sixth of the radius. And the thickness of that ring will be one-fortieth of the radius. Again, all relative to our radius, so it scales neatly over time. We'll then make that into CG Rex. We can draw it on the screen. This thing again, look at the half and half, so it's centered on the middle, not off to the side. And then stroke a circle. And we get that. And I, I know, it sucks, right? But this middle bit is complicated. What can we put in there to make it look better? Now, we cannot just fill it in white. Wouldn't work, because this thing has to work in night mode and light mode, right? Dark and light mode. And so instead, I want to talk about drawing a drawing operation I really love. If you say to iOS, draw me a red rectangle, then, oh sorry, square, sorry, and then draw me a blue circle, by default, it'll just overlap the pixels. Blue over red, boom, we're done. That's how drawing works. But if we change the blend mode of our context to use the clear blend mode, what we're saying now is actually ignore all the color data, and instead use that drawing operation as an erase operation, and we get that. It cuts out a hole in our graphic, which is perfect for our needs here. We don't want to fill that middle area, we want to clear the middle area. And so, we make a new centerpiece using that clear operation. Clear that circle in the middle, and then fill it with whatever you want to, doesn't matter, it's not drawing pixels, it's erasing pixels instead. And second to that, go ahead and stroke afterwards in orange, with a normal blend mode. Go back to just drawing pixels again, please. And we do that. Yes. Erase the mess. OK. Now, <laughs> we've gone one line over ChatGPT's horror show. But I was actually pretty good. So I don't feel too bad about that. And I, I would be so tempted to stop here. But I, I couldn't do that, because we're winning. And we're ahead. So let's just, let's just carry on going further. Let's make it look even more like Apple's design, which means how do we put the times around the clock face. How to do that? And to put the times in the right positions means knowing, firstly, how far away from the center they should be, and also how big they should be. Again, relative sizing, relative spacing, make it all flexible over time. And so we'll make a new method called draw hours in a context with that radius for relative sizing, and make our constants. I take size a fourth of my radius. Again, try and error. You do what you think looks good to you. Then offset, how far to draw from a center. 75% of our radius, most of the way out. And I can loop from I in 1 through 12, draw each hour with some more code coming here.
And to draw each hour is a fairly simple process. We just say, take the hour number, the i, make it a string, put it in some text, give it a nice chunky font size based on our font size there, make it bold. That's our thing to draw. Then decide where to draw it. I'm going to basically use our offset, push it up to the top, and then draw it there. Great. But that line of code in the middle isn't quite right. We cannot just say draw at the top at every single number. We want numbers to go round the way and not all be in the same location. That would look silly like open uh, chat easy, right? That would be wrong. So instead, we're going to use a little bit of mathematics. Only a small amount, don't worry. Think about the degrees in a circle going all the way around a circle. We know that equals to 360 degrees, right? CG point does not think in degrees, it thinks in radians. That, if you remember back in school, is 2 pi radians. Now, if you want to go halfway round a circle, it's not 360 degrees, it's going to be 180 degrees. And therefore, it's not 2 pi radians, it's just pi radians. That is half a circle. So, stick with me, the math's almost done. <laughs> 2 pi is 12 hours, the complete clock. 1 pi is 6 hours, half the clock. We want the distance to 1 of our numbers, and that's going to be pi divided by 6. 1 sixth of pi gives us the angle for one number in our clock. And so now, back in our code, we can say, take that CG point and apply a transform where rotation by double its number in the uh, loop times 1 sixth of pi. Move around, all the way around each time. And then it's called draw hours. And the result is this, which is identical to Apple's clock. It looks really, really close. Now, obviously, we've blown past ChatGPT's lines of code. I am 14 lines longer. But it's really damn good at this point. And if you kind of break it down, we've done a lot. But I'm going to squeeze in two more things really fast to show you what humans do. First, there's a bug in my code. It's not my bug. Don't get your hopes up. I practiced. It's a, it's a Swift UI bug. <coughs> they exist. Sorry, Apple. <laughs> um, it exists. And the bug is in this line of code. Now, this is our day components code here. This triggers a bug exactly. If you say, don't get the current hour, minute, and second, get me zero, zero, zero. It's midnight exactly on the dot. When that happens, SwiftUI drawing capsules does something very strange indeed. You'll see this result. Some things go up, some things go down. The rectangles go up, the capsules go down. SwiftUI. And, and for some reason, if you say rotate by 3.141, it's fine. 3.1415, that's fine. 3.1458, that's fine. Rotate by 3.14159, that breaks, but 3.145 is fine. So if you I, <laughs> apparently a fix has been identified for a future release of iOS. We're on 16.2 right now, folks, if you're watching later on. Perhaps 16.3 has fixed it. We'll see. But right now it's a bug. And so we've got to fix this bug. We've got to work around Swift UI somehow. And so I'm going to say, actually, if you happen to be exactly pi rotation, go fractionally off pi rotation, imperceptible to the human eye, but avoids the bug with Swift UI. And that solves the problem. And the second thing I want to look at is the performance thing. Because, as we saw yesterday, drawing 60 FPS is a lot of work. That's 16.66 milliseconds for every frame. And if you have a ProMotion phone, of course, 120 FPS, it's a lot of frames a second just to draw a little sticking, sticking second hand going round, round, round. Do you need to draw 120 of those per second? Probably not. And so I'd encourage you. What I'm saying, an animation timeline view, as fast as you possibly can, actually give a minimum interval of something. I'm doing 1 20th of a second. So it's doing 1 6th of the work in a ProMotion display. It's saving lots and lots of time and basically imperceptible. If you're small, you can go even less than that. So two small changes that we can do if we understand the code. It's our code. We wrote the code. We know what it does. We can fix it. We can identify it. We can make it better. That's an important thing that humans do. So 
Our final tally, as it were, I think it's human six, machine zero. Obviously, I am the coder and the judge, so it's not entirely fair, but there you go. But our version, you really break it down as a number of things. It shows the hour numbers, which looks really, really nice. It has constantly sweeping second hand going around. It has Apple design extremely closely. We looked at a bug in SwiftUI in the framework, which ChatGPT can't even know about, never mind fix. And then we also looked at performance. But critically, ours also works at any size. You've seen it here at full size. It looks great smaller. It looks great even smaller. Every size was a relative size. It all scales down beautifully. Now, <laughs> you might think it's a crushing victory for humanity. And you'd be right. <laughs> but there are still folks who say, oh, chat GPT is so cool. I really want to use it. OK, go for it. Try it out. But ask yourself some questions first. Do you? understand fully the code, it's enough to make changes. Can you then maintain that code for years to come when iOS 17 or 18 breaks a feature? Can you fix that bug in the future? Who will look at the security implications? Is it using all your authentication correctly, for example? Who will look at performance implications? Are we suddenly getting gigantic runtimes because it did a bad implementation? Who makes sure it works with voiceover and similar? Who can use your code afterwards? I put your code here in quotes because it's not your code, it's ChatGPT's code. You've given it your code, your, perhaps your company code, it's modified it and written it back to you. Who else can use it now? What's the licensing? And ultimately, is what it's produced actually correct? Now that seems simple, right? But it's actually very, very challenging to decide what is correct. Just literally last week, as I'm recording this thing, hi, hi folks, last week, so January the 8th, as I'm making this, it's now the uh, 13th, someone messaged me on Twitter saying, hey, I'm learning Swift and Swift UI. I'm finding ChatGPT really helpful for beginner questions. If I go to Stack Overflow or Google, I get really unhelpful long answers, but ChatGPT can explain things to me, which is really helpful. And he points out in a reply to himself, the risk here is that I'll confidently get a, a wrong answer at some point, but the ease of getting the right answer most times outweighs the confusion of the wrong answer. Now, the problem is that ChatGPT is very, very confident about its answers. Here's me. I ask you a question. What is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 13? Its answer is that, 1, 6, 0, 5, 6, 9, 7, 0, 3, 7. It's not. <laughs> I said, are you sure it doesn't seem correct? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't right. Here's a different answer, and that's wrong. <laughs> Try again. Ah, oh, you're right, sorry. Here's a third answer, and that's wrong. And I correct it, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's what I meant all along. It, honestly, it, each time it gave us the wrong answer in full confidence. And this we can mathematically prove is wrong. With code, it's much harder. It can be wrong, but it'll still confidently tell you this is the right answer. And that's much more challenging. And in fact, it happened to that person who tweeted me. He posted some screenshots saying, look how great ChatGPT is. He said here, in this code here, there's a form and a text saying, hello world. Is form a class instance? If so, why are we not placing it inside any variable or constant? And ChatGPT's reply is here. In the code you provided, form is not a class instance. It's actually a function that's part of the Swift UI framework. It's not a function. It's a struct. But it's telling you confidently, and there's 400 words in response here, that it's a function. You've got to know when it's wrong. That's really, really hard to do, which is why Stack Overflow has banned ChatGPT from its answers. Moderators have been told if you find any ChatGPT answers, suspend that person's account outright. Because it's confidently wrong. And that's very, very dangerous. Someone's wrong goes, well, you know, I think I might be wrong here. That's helpful. You can consider it. It sounds like it's correct. Now, before you throw it away, I do at least put a few things in your head. It's not useless. It's very impressive at the very least here, right? First, can ChatGPT help you explore alternatives to your code or your approach or something else? 
can it help explain what some code means or does, perhaps in a different language you're not used to? Can it help suggest improvements to your code? And can it help mock up some unit tests? And each of these things, I want to point out the most important words. Can it help explore? Can it help explain? Can it help suggest? Can it help mock up? It is not replacing us. It is not a question of man versus machine. It's a question of man working with the machine. Can it help us write better Swift UI code? And I would love to hear afterwards what your answer to that question is. Thank you.